Oh, hallelujah for your grace and for your mercy. We are thankful to you, Father, because of who you are and of all of the things that you have done and all that you are doing in the midst of your people. We belong to you. We are purchased with a price. Therefore, we glorify you, Father, in our bodies and in our spirits. I thank you for this privilege and opportunity that you've granted us to come together to rally around your word. It is through your word, dear Father, that we have life. That's the way you have set up the system that we are to attend to your word, inclining our ears continually unto your sayings, allowing your word to dep- not depart from our eyes, but to keep them in the midst of our hearts. But truly your word is life unto those that find them and health to all our flesh. We thank you today, Father, as we rally together here. and We give you glory and we give you praise yeah. continually in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Well, go ahead and, and be seated. Praise the name of our God forever and forever. Thank God for his word for you and for all of you, for you that are viewing on the, across the airways. We're here to serve and to do what God's called us to do. Amen. That's what I'm here to do. I plan to do that as long as I'm on this earth. Hallelujah. And when I have finished, then I'll go and be with Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we are here. We have been looking at some things on the, uh, throughout the beginning, from the beginning of the year, dealing with some basic truths that God, I believe that God is really prompting us to review. Uh, we began with the new birth, uh, very foundational things that we need to be reminded of, things that sometimes slip. Mm-hmm. We, we talked about the new, you must be born again. Jesus himself, he said that you must be born again. If you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And then once you have been born again, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Those are the instructions that Jesus gives unto us. And if we're going to follow anybody's instruction, we need to follow his instruction. Then we talked about faith. Faith. Well, without faith, you can't even do any of this. The Bible said, without faith it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Uh, The prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk 2.4 says, Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. We are the just. What are the just? The just are those that have been justified. Those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus, have accepted Jesus Christ as one's Lord and Savior. And then from, the, from faith, we moved over into the arena of, of love. Now, all of these work together. They, they're, not, they're, they're not separate entities, so to speak. Uh-huh. You know, when you talk about the new birth, when you talk about being born, uh, being filled with the Spirit, when you talk about living by faith, walking in love, it's all, the, all these things work together. You don't do one without the other. You can't, you know, when you, you get born again, well, love, you, love is involved in that, you know. But for the sake of encouraging us and building us up, <coughs> we talk about them in this sense. And so we talked, we spent some time about, uh, uh, in reference to walking in love. And, and today I want to, we want to move on over into the arena of forgiveness, uh, forgiving one another. Now, there, there's no question that love and forgiveness, they, they are hand in hand. You, you can't do one without the other. And so, let's look at the Word of God uh, in, in reference to, uh, on the subject of forgiveness. Then Ephesians ch- chapter 4 and verse 32 reads like this. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Mm. I, I found out something about love and forgiveness. Uh, it's not complicated. I think we make it more complicated than it really is yeah. in the way that we think. Mm-hmm. But uh, when you talk about forgiveness, you talk about freedom. The Bible is called the perfect law of liberty. When Jesus uh, launched his ministry, if you will look at the fourth chapter of 
uh, Luke's gospel, and uh, Jesus launches his ministry. And uh, the Bible says in the 17th verse, well, let's pick up at the 16th. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. His, his, his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Mm -hmm. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, we know what the gospel is. The gospel is the good news of God. He went on to say, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And then the next statement he makes, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Now, we can look at that in several different directions. We can look at it, well, those that are in jail. Well, I don't think he's talking about going out and turning people out of jail, per se. I think he's talking about another, a higher level of captivity. A man can be held captive in his mind. He can be held captive in his, in his thinking. And uh, he said he came to proclaim liberty unto the captive. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that will hold you captive is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will hold you captive. If, if, if when you are not walking in love, and here again they all are the same, when you're not walking in love, when you're walking in unforgiveness, it's a burden to you. It's, 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 it's almost like being cuffed, handcuffed, locked in. It just weighs in on you. I have found this out in my own personal growth and experience as I learned how to forgive people, it liberates me. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like laying down at night with a clear mind going, you know, where you can go to sleep. You ever lay down there and try to go to sleep, and you just, my mind just bombarded with, dear God, first one thing, then another. Yeah. I mean, you know, dear God, you can't even go to sleep. You go to sleep and wake up jumping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind just, 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 just bogged down. Well, unforgiveness, when you are packing a grudge, so to speak, that's what a gun forgiveness mm -hmm. is. When you're packing a grudge, it weighs on you. I have found out that packing a grudge does much more damage to the packer than it does to the one that posts up and mistreated you. Yeah. It does. The, you know, the, the you person, well, I don't know whatever they mean, whatever they do, and it don't have to be much. I found that out. You know what I found out? For this, I found out it's really not the it's not the thing. It's really is a means whereby the devil uses to manipulate and control you. Most people, if they got a a, a bone to pick or, or an axe to grind with somebody, yeah. if you really get right down to it and ask them, "Why are you stewed up?" Mm. They're gonna have to think real hard. To, and, uh, one, one. You know, particularly if they've been packing it a while. I've heard people say things like, you know, to the essence, the essence you know, they get all stood up, and they don't even know what they stood up about. But they stood up. My point in saying this, all of these things are attempts of the, it's not the issue. It is not, when you ask somebody, why are you upset? Why are you, why are you, why do you, why is it that you don't like this person? And I'll bet you if they really spell out exactly what happened, it would sound like some child. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you took my Tonka toy. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm, what I'm trying to show you is that it's not the, it's not the issue that, that you think that, 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 that's causing the problem. Yeah. There is a culprit behind that. Oh, yeah. Now, over in 1 Peter, God says us to be watchful and to be vigilant mm. because we have an adversary. And I really think that this is where people miss it. We have an adversary. Mm -hmm. And he tells us exactly who it is. He calls him out by name. Oh, we have an oh. adversary, the devil, yeah. 
who walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And he will use anything that you allow him to use. Mm -hmm. If you have touchy feelings, he will use that. Mm -hmm. He uses your own weaknesses to devour you. You know, well, you know, I just, it just makes me mad when I see somebody do this or that or the other. I just can't stand to see somebody spit. Well, he's going to make sure somebody spit right around you. And then you're going to get all worked up. You know, I just say that, but, but people get mad, but it's worth less than that. But my, my point is that it's really the issue that you are calling to be the problem is really not the issue. It is the fact that you have an adversary and he came to captivate you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said he came to liberate you from your captivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, that, that's what he came to do. He came to set you free. He said, no, notice what he said, is to set at liberty those that are bruised. He came to, he came to proclaim liberty to the captive, and then, then, he's, he's, and then he talks about the recovery of sight to the blind, and then the next day he mentions liberty again, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. oppressed. Yes. Well, if you look at the, 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 the uh, uh, Acts 10, 38, mm -hmm. the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing what? Good. Good. And healing what? Oh. Those who are what? Oh. By whom? Yeah. There he is again. Yeah. There he is again. You see that? You ever see his name keep popping up? Mm -hmm. Did you ever notice it's never the problem? We, you know, we, we think we got issues. People don't have issues. There's no issues. There is no problem. Mm. You got a devil. Now, first, P Peter said, you, your adversary, the devil, walks around. And then, then in the accident, uh, Luke, Luke says, it, it's, you know, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of whom? The of the devil. Let me ask you something. Did you get your healing yet? That's the truth. See, look, look at that. Jesus came, and he came to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. we, were held, we, held, we were held captive by the devil. Now, now that he has set us free, we should be free indeed. Yeah. But I'm concerned about the believers that still walk around with handcuffs on, on. out of jail. Jesus has come and said, open the prison doors. And we still cuffed. No reason. No reason. How am, I, how am I cuffed? I tell you what, I'm still mad at so-and-so. I haven't forgiven him. I t you ever hear people say that? And I hear it. I've, I've heard it come out of people's mouth. I just can't forgive such and such and so. Lord, that's pathetic. That's a sad statement. I just can't forgive. Well, what you're saying is I just can't get free. I will never be free. And let me tell you something. You will never be free until you experience the forgiveness of God. Amen. Now, forgiveness is not a matter of human effort. It's not a, something that you can do on your strength. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I, that's what I notice what people, when they, that's what they're saying when they say, you know, I just can't give. And is he telling what somebody did to them? But they never tell you what they did to somebody. Come on, come on. I never have no, I never seen it. I never said, Pastor, you know, I tell you, I did such and such to somebody. I don't ever get that. I always get what they did to me. What they did to me. What they did to me. I tell you, they just, they just, they wronged me. They, I've been wrong. I tell you, they, they wronged me. And I can't, oh, oh, you don't know. They, I tell you, that thing hurt to me. Man, that thing, that thing hurt. They wronged me. How do you wrong a dead man? See, the one that's supposed to be wrong, you're supposed to be crucified. See, you, you, you disobeyed God. You're not true. The Bible says, I've been crucified. Yeah. You, 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 you consider yourself to be dead. Reckon yourself to be dead to sin. 
You got to reckon yourself to be dead to sin. But no, you're well alive because somebody hurt your feelings. People, we need, we, listen, I'm telling you, that's something that we, and, and we, we, are, we are guilty of that, and we suffer the brunt of that unnecessarily. Yeah. You, you don't have to suffer like that. See, <coughs> here again, remember, we're not talking about a list of things that God give us, and then we go fulfill this list on human effort. That's not what we are talking about. I really believe that that's where Christians read the Word of God. They go and they read the Word of God, and when God said, you know, God, God, as God speaks, then we, we make a list. Well, don't do this, don't do this. We see, actually, that's the, really the law. You don't need to make your list. Go back over to the Deuteronomy. You can read it. You don't have to write it down again. It's already written down. But guess what Jesus did when he came? He fulfilled everything that's written down over there. He fulfilled it. He fulfilled everything that's written down over there. Forget about Deuteronomy. And when I said I don't mean forget, I mean, I mean forget about your do's and don'ts. Because Jesus already fulfilled all of Deuteronomy. He fulfilled all of your do's and don'ts. Amen. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Jesus didn't. He fulfilled that. And now I am in Christ. Yeah. I'm in Christ. You know, you know I, I tell you what, ha having a problem... While you are in Christ, is like a chef complaining that he's hungry. Think about that. Now he is the he is the chef, the head chef at that. Now he's the head chef, and he got a bone to pick. I'm hungry. Here's a guy back there with all the food. You know, can make anything he wants and make it good because he's a good chef. But he's griping because he's hungry. Well, that is the same principle as a person having a problem being in Christ. How can you have a problem being in Christ? You have been totally exonerated. You wouldn't even be in him if you were not exonerated. Being in him and being exonerated is one and the same. Oh, God, get a hold of that. Being in Christ and being totally exonerated is one and the same. Amen. Chew on that a spell, because you, we, we, you need that. Because, you know, we, we, you know we, we, just, we just, we put up with unnecessary things. And so God, he, he speaks, see, this is, oh God, this is not something, don't, don't go try to forgive. Because what you're going to end up doing, you're going to end up, taking the word of God and moving your flesh in there and trying to fulfill God's word with the flesh. Number one, flesh got, the flesh ain't going to go, the flesh got no business in there. Flesh cannot even lie in the gate. No, no, no. I'm in Christ. I'm in, if any man be in Christ, what is he? Well, if I'm still out there operating in unforgiveness and a new creature, dear God, when am I going to realize that I can get rid of that? If I'm a new creature, I can't be in, in unforgiveness. I'm a new creature. No, unforgiveness is the way they operate over there in the old kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. See, you're going to have to see it in this light. See, see what, here's what, oh God, I know where the problem is. I know where the problem is. I can't half say it sometimes, but I know where the problem is. The problem is we are trying to drag this anvil this flesh of ours, over into God's kingdom and make a nice guy out of him. No. No, God tells me, he said, don't even bring that thing over here. He said, ain't no flesh going to glory in my presence. There's no flesh is going to glory in my presence. Now, you remember the, remember the, 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 the parable of the, the story with the prodigal son? Mm -hmm. Remember the older one that stayed home? The prodigal that didn't go anywhere. Amen. He had a real problem. He had a real problem because what he was trying to do, he was trying to bring the old flesh over into the new order. Uh, uh. And he felt justified yeah. in not forgiving his brother. He felt justified. Why? Because he had never done anything like that. No. 
I never did anything like that, he said. Let's go and take a look at that. Let's go and take a look at it. Go on, over, go on back over there to Luke's gospel. So we're talking about unforgiveness. Luke's gospel. And let's pick up, it's right around the 15th chapter there. And then let's, let's, look, at the, uh, let's look at the 19th, the, the 11th. Luke, uh, Luke 15. And let's uh, around the 11th verse there. Let's look at the older son. That's what the Bible calls him in the 25th verse, called him the older son. But let's pick up at the 11th verse. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them. Now notice, there's, there's something interesting here. The boy... Asked for his. The young boy get asked for his. Mm -hmm. And the father gave them their. He, he, yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't throw that away. Mm. There's something to that. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them mm. his livelihood. Many times. When people have an axe to grind with somebody else, it's their own, they're, they're, they're venting their own problems. Yeah. See, no doubt, this older boy would have loved to have done what the younger one did, but he didn't have the nerve. <laughs> he, he daydreamed about it. The young one did it. But let's just move on. Let, let, we, we won't look at the unforgiveness side of this thing. Because I'm telling you, you don't know how much unforgiveness is in the church. It's shameful. And it's, 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 the, it's the shackles that the Christians are wearing unnecessarily. I'm telling you, these shackles, the shackles of unforgiveness, you know, unforgiveness and self-righteousness are twins. They're one and the same. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness and self-righteousness. And I'm going to show you this right here in this text here. Unforgiveness and self-righteousness. Yeah. And you're not, you're not living, you're not, you're not, you're not resting on good, the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. You're resting on your own. That's why there's, that's why there's unforgiveness. Yeah. You've taken responsibility that's not yours. Mm. And now you're over in unforgiveness. Now you operate in, in your own, 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 you develop your own righteousness. Now, you got, now you're on your own. Because when you develop your own righteousness, you got to, now, 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 go back over to Revelations, and you read Revelations. Around the, the last part of the 20th and the 21st chapter of Revelation, you're going to see there's going to be a whole bunch of self-righteous people. You remember on the great white throne judgment day, you notice when you're reading there, he says, uh, although they were, they were the books, the book books, Plural. Plural, the books. Mm. Now, the book of life is, is singular. That's interesting. That was interesting. You know, I believe, I believe, I believe that's kind of coincided with what Jesus was saying. Jesus said the righteous, the path to the, to, uh, to the right is, is narrow and few. Yeah. But the road to destruction is broad and loaded. Broad. Those that are going to be judged by their works... The Bible says, I judge according to those things that are in the books. Mm. Plural. Mm. Books. But then the book of life is, is singular. Read, check that out when you read that. Well, what are we talking about here? We're talking about self-righteousness. The amount of self-righteous people is amazing. Self-righteous is when you reject the righteousness of God and establish your own righteousness. Oh. How many people have you ever tried to win it to and they tell you how good they are? They tell you, I don't do, I'm good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I do this. I, dear God, I have had that. I have, oh, dear God, I've had it. I remember I had this fellow, good man, good man. I'm trying to work with him, trying to get him in to see Jesus. And uh, he didn't want to come in. I said, come on, come on in. He said, no, I'll do this. I said, well, man, you can't go on that. He said, yeah, but we give to the poor. We give, we, give, we give all this money to the children's, 
He was some lodge he was in. I don't know what doing them lodge. I don't know if y'all know about them. You, you know, might even know something about some of them. But they, well, they, 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 they said, we're on a lodge. In my lodge, we give all of this money to the, to the children's hospital. And we, we give all of this. Do we do all this. And I said, that's good. That's good. Thank God you do that. I said, but you can't rest on that. I said, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I told good man, older fella. And I hate him. He wasn't no young, he wasn't a youngster. But his lodge, you keep talking about this. Like, man, I'm not about no lodge. Jesus isn't sitting by no lodge. But what do we have here? <clears throat> we have here <clears throat> a generating of one's own righteousness. Yeah. You have decided what's good. I'm going to do this. I do all this good stuff, and then don't worry about it. I'm good. No, unrighteousness and self all that stuff, un unforgiveness and self all that is piled in the same pile. Yeah. And, and go over there and read it. Please go and read it over in Revelation because it's all over there. He said, those, they'll be, those that will stand, they'll be judged by their works. Those that were judged by their works. Well, I'm, I'm, I, 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 see, see, true salvation, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not only says it's the gift of God, not of work. That's true salvation. Not of work. So, so that's clear. For by grace, for by, look at that, for by grace, you have been saved, how? Through faith. And that not of yourselves. You can't do enough work to please God to be saved. It's the, your salvation is the gift from God. It's the gift of God. God gives you that. I've, I've heard the term, I don't take charity. That's a bad word. That's worse than cussing. That is, that is custom. I don't take charity. Well, you can't get born again. God is love. God is charity. That's what he is. In fact, one translation used the word love, translated charity. Love and charity saying, I don't take charity. Crazy thing. Boy, that's bad thing. No, 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 no. That's God. God is love, and we are saved by grace. But if you're going to bring your works in there, well, uh, well, I do this, I do that. No, it ain't no I do this. You can't be saved by that. God said no flesh is going to glory in his presence. Amen. Nobody's going to stand up and say, oh, look at me. Look at what I did. Bang, 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 beating on his chest. Mm-mm, mm-mm. For by grace, Jesus said it this way over in the Gospel of John. 14. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. There is no works that you can do that will bring you unto your Father. There is no works. There is no works. You got to understand that. That's what makes Jesus so precious because it is the works that he has done and to reject that and try to come up with your own, that's, that's blasphemy, that's mean, that's hard, that, that's, that's against Jesus. You reject the works that Jesus did, the suffering that he went through, so that I could be saved, and then I'm going to go and say, well, I did this and I did that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. No, you can't do that. And that's what unforgiveness and self-righteousness is all, is, is all in one. Yeah. Let me show this to you. Well, the young son, the prodigal, took, took his all, in verse 13, said, and, now, and, and, and not many days after the younger said, gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, mm -hmm. there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. You know, running with the girls and hanging out at the bars and just drinking and smoking pot and doing all that and just red, ripping it around. You know, you know the gamut. Yeah. You've been there. You've been there. You know, just take your money quick, you know. Proverbs says that. Proverbs says right, so right, that righteous living will bleed your po bring poverty. Yeah, righteous living will bring quick poverty. Yeah. And it didn't take him long. You know, if you're always dumping, taking something out of the pot and not putting nothing in there, it ain't going to last too long. It won't, it, won't, it won't last long. No, no, because you're taking out all the time and ain't putting nothing in there. He ain't working. He, he, he's spending money. You know, and, and you know, when you're spending money, you know what I mean, all of, everybody's your friend. You know, it's like, set them up. Set them up. Everybody gathered around you. Until you finish setting them up. 
And then when you finish setting them up, they all gone. Well, he was setting them up until he ran out of money. Verse 14 says, when he had spent all, that didn't take him long either. There arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be, and he began, and began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. Mm. Now, understanding that this, is, this story is given from a Jewish perspective, I'm just assuming that Jesus, Jesus is giving the story, he's Jewish, yeah. and there's that hog. They don't even do well. You follow what I'm saying? There's a hog. You know, we like bacon, but yeah, you can't take that bacon in the, to Israel. I was over there. I ain't seen no bacon while I was there. <laughs> but it's interesting. This is called a low-down job. This Jewish boy with a defeating hog. And would, be, it would have gladly have filled his stomach with the part with the swine they ate. And nobody, where are them friends at that was at the bar? Mm. Uh -oh. Where are the pot smoking buddies? Uh -oh. Where are they at? Uh -oh. The Bible said no one gave him anything. That, I'm telling you, that, that's the danger. Yes, that, that's, that, that's that world out there. They wouldn't give him nothing. But thank God he came to himself. Now, when he came to himself, that's the, that's, that's, that's the, that's, see, there's a great story here. There's a great lesson here. It's not the riotous living that's against this boy. It's not the riotous living. Because all of us, that's all, that's all you know mm -hmm. until you get born again. You, that's all you know is riotous living. And somebody tell you about Jesus. But the key is, when, re when, when repentance show up, uh -huh. what are you going to do with that? And, and, and so, from the 17th verse, right on down, 17th, 18th, 19th, is, 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 is the repentance of the prodigal. Which, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. that, that that's, that's the good. That's what Jesus came for. Yeah. Yeah. Is outlines the repentance. Because verse 17 says, when he came to himself... He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with home, hunger? He said, here's what I'll do. I'll get up me, I'll go home. I'll say to my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. That's repentance. That, that God loves that. Amen. It, 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 it's not the righteous living, because all of us are righteous livers. We, 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 had a, we had a righteous nature in us. That's all we had. That's all the nature you had before you got born again. You had a righteous nature. So don't be moping over what you did before you got born again. And the devil is good for that. The devil will rob you of your present day joy telling you about your yesterday. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I know. I, don't, I have to deal with him. There's nothing wrong with your yesterdays. Once repentance come in, I can prove that by the, by the, by the, by the loving Forgiveness of the Father. Yes. And so, the young prodigal recognized his faults, got up, came home, and, 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 and met his father. He met in, 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 in attitude of repentance, and the father never said a word to him about what he did. Yeah. Now listen to me, listen to this real good, take this with you. True forgiveness have no need of details. Amen. You don't need to go into details about what somebody did. Because people will come there and tell you about the fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, if you want to sit there and feed on the details, then what you become, a, you are, now, you are, now you are a gossip soaker. Mm. You enjoying the gossip. Mm. No, no, no. Listen to me. Don't, take this with you. True forgiveness require no details of your past, what you've done. I'm really not interested in what you did. Because now you're going to be expecting me to tell you what I did. Mm -hmm. And I done forgot it. And I ain't, and I ain't, and I ain't going to try to think about it. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you either. Come on. You follow up? Because that's not, the case. That's, not, that's not what we're interested in. I'm not interested in, I'm not interested in the details of, of your past. See, the father proved that because the father never meant, he didn't ask him, well, what, what, so what, what, what town you was in? 
Where was what was the name of the bar? You know what I mean? What was her name? And all of that. He, he, no, he wasn't he missing on it. He wasn't interested in that. The good what's the good news? The good news is that you're back home. That's the way God is. That's the way. See, this, this story here is a depiction of our Heavenly Father toward us. Oh, yeah. All of us were prodigals. Yes, all, I said all of us yes, was prodigals. Mm -hmm. And we came, thank God we came home. Religion is the God that stays home and is self-righteous uh -huh. and unforgiving. That's what religion will do for you. Well, I'm all right. I've, I've been a good boy. I've been saying my prayers all my life. Mm -hmm. Better watch that. Better watch that. Now watch this. The father demonstrates the love of a father. And that, uh, that's what God is to us. Yes. The father said to the servant, he never did. Now notice the father never responded to him. Because there's no need. For, I, don't need to, I don't need to know the details of what you did. I'm so glad to see you. I'm not interested in what you did. When you watch this, watch this. When you come to God, He's not interested in what you did. Hey. Why you? You ever know? You ever know now I'm, I'm sure some. I bet you somebody in this room right now, or somebody watching right now, have had to put up with the devil with this. Always going back, trying to dig up what you did, and rehearsing, and, and trying to trying to apologize for it. Good. I remember one time the devil did that to me. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, I'm trying to find folks. Everybody I mistreated. I'm trying to go find them. And some of them folk dead, so what are you going to do? I mean, I really was in a problem. <laughs> but the devil had me straight to that. <laughs> the devil told me, so you need to go find and forgive you. If you need folk to forgive you. And I'm trying to find these folk. And I'm thinking about it. I got to be a list of people that I, the people, some of them dead. You can't find them. <laughs> so, so, uh, listen, the devil is mean. The devil is a mean devil. Uh, Maybe y'all never been that, been that slow. I was slow. I was trying to fix my past. I was trying to fix my past. Because the devil said, you got, man, you, 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 you. You, can't, you, ain't, supposed, you ain't got to do that. Amen. You go to the, listen, the father was not interested in what this boy did. Thank you, thank you. He was back at his home. And he, ain't, he wouldn't mention, he wouldn't mention None of this boy's past. Yeah. He was to see, I told you. Mm. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> Why do we, we do that? See, we do that. Mm. Learn to, don't, don't do that. See, 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 did I, see, did I tell you? Mm. That's not God. That's not God. I mean, we, we do it and, 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 we don't think, and we don't think nothing of it. I knew it wasn't going to work. I told you it wasn't going to work. Don't do that. That's not God. You see how God responds? Yeah. Look at verse 22. That tells you how God responds to your coming home. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Put it on him, put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet. This is the this is the this is the prodigal he's talking about. Do what? Yeah. And bring the fatted calf here, kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to make merry. You see what do you see? This is the attitude of your heavenly father toward you when you come in out of the cold. Yes. But you got that big brother. You got that oldest brother. It's just, another, it's just another story. These are the good Christians. These are the good Christians. Mm -hmm. Now his older brother was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. Mm -hmm. He said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry. Now you see that? Something is wrong with that. His brother is long... As he's out of sight, out of mind, not a word. 
good. He's gone. I got everything now. And as soon as he shows up, he gets mad. Man. No, see, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he gets mad. I've seen some of this in my lifetime. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen things like this. You know, people, but this happened with husband and wife, you know. You know, the wife acting like she wants a husband saved. He gets saved and she backslides. So she got nothing else to talk about now. Amen. <laughs> Listen, I just seen some stuff. Because every time she's she talking about him and he won't get saved. And he, yeah, 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 yeah. Mouth just like going like a bell clap. He gets saved and then she backslides. What's with that? She got nothing else to talk about now because the man saved. Now she got, no, she got nobody to. You think you haven't seen stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. You said, you, there ain't no such thing. Is there such thing as what you're reading here? Yes. You would think uh, 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 your, your young brother come home, you would be happy. Not this boy. Mm. Not this boy. He is mad. Why? Because there's a spirit of unforgiveness large in his heart. Mm. There's a spirit of self righteousness and unforgiveness. See, those bad spirits run in packs, you know. If you got a spirit of, of, of unforgiveness, you probably got a spirit of self-righteousness. If you have a spirit of, of unforgiveness, that's not the only one in there. Remember what Jesus said about the house that's swept and garnished? And everybody's in there? And then an the evil spirit coming there and looking at it, he didn't see nobody in there? Now he won't go in there by himself. What did he do? Hey, over here! He go get something that's worse than he is. And the guy's in a worse state than he was in the beginning. That, that happens. That, that's the truth. Spirit of unforgiveness. I'm just telling you, if you got a spirit of unforgiveness, you got another one. That's not the only one you got. If you, listen to me real carefully, if you have a spirit of unforgiveness, he is not the only one you got. You got another one in there somewhere. This guy had a spirit of unforgiveness, you see, and then he, and, and also that, see, uh, uh, the there's this spirit of self-righteousness pops up. Mm. Whoa. Let's, let's, let's read on here. So he... <laughs> so, he said to, so he called one of the servants and asked him, what's, what's, what's going on? What is meant? He said to him, your brothers just, just come home and your father received them and killed a fatty cat. Then he got verse 20. He got mad about it. Mm -hmm. What are you getting mad about? Why are you mad? What? Now watch this. Th just, just think. Your brother was lost, uh -huh. he's found, yeah. and now you mad. Do you, see, do you see how many spirits working in you? Oh. Jesus, this is Jesus' story. Mm -hmm. Your brother is lost, he's found, now you get mad about it. That is not the only spirit that's working in you. Watch this, let's look at it. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out mm -hmm. and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here's that self-righteous spirit popping up. I never transgressed. Oh boy, there it is. All my works, all my goodness, all my goodness, self-righteous. There's a self-righteous spirit that goes with the spirit of unforgiveness. Mm. I have never transgressed. I never transgressed your commandments at any time. I've been a perfect gentleman. I have never done anything wrong. But look at you now. You are me. You see that un unforgiveness spirit that's in you? You cannot even forgive your brother. Mm. Because that's not, not the only spirit. I'm telling you, if you have a spirit of unforgiveness, there's another one in there somewhere. There's more than that. Yeah. It's proof right here. Yeah. This is here for us to learn from. Yeah. Self-righteous spirit. Now, ho ho hold your place there because I, I want to show you something here. I want to show you something here. I want to show you about the self-righteous spirit. Self-righteous spirit is I'm right because I do right. Mm. I'm right. Because I do right. 
I'm right because I do right. That is those people that are being judged. They want to be, they choose to be judged by their works. Now, now you know, because it's a self-righteous spirit, so I do right, so I'm right. Mm -hmm. Watch this. I want, to, I want to tie this in there with you. I'm picking up at the 20th chapter of Revelation in verses 11. Revelations 20, 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. There, were, there was found no place for them. Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Yes. And books, B-O-O-K-S, and books were open, and another book, singular, was open, which is the book of life. Yeah. So we know what, what the singular, we know what that one is. Yeah. That's the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their, ah, I never transgressed you, Father, one time. Mm. My works. Watch this. Let's bring this down to 19, to 2020. Uh -oh. I always pay my tithes. I go to church at least three times a month. Uh -oh. I do this. I always do this, and I always do this. You have established a system where you are living on your works. Dangerous. Mm. Dangerous. 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 What you're saying is, I should, be, I should be blessed because I do this. I do this. Yeah. You are judged. You are, you are setting yourself to be judged by your work. Here this group is. He calls them. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. He says it again. Mm. You want to be judged by your works? You want to be self-righteous? Go right ahead. I'll let you do that. Mm. Yeah, I've seen this. I, people, I've seen this. Don't, don't, God, don't try to stand before God on your works. For by grace are we saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not according to your works, not your works. Don't even start that. But if you develop some idea, you know what I mean, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this and I, and I should have. No, you are now forgetting about Jesus and you're basing your salvation on what you can do. No good. That's dangerous. Mm. The sea gave up the dead who were in them. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in it, them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone, listen to this, and anyone not found written in the book, that's a singular again, yeah. the book of life Man. was what? Cast Man. into the lake of fire. Anyone named that's not in the book of life, the book of life, mm -hmm. was cast where? To the lake of fire. No, I don't stand on my works. See, that's why, all, that's why this is written here. This is written so God is teaching, is teaching us. Well, no, no. When you go before God, don't you ever go before God bragging on what you did. No. no. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. It's the same premise. The prodigal son that went away and spent all his good. He knew he had nothing to brag about. He come home in the spirit of humility saying, Oh God, I don't, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. And this is the one that the, heart, the father is having a party for. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. I'm, 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 all of this is to show how necessary it is for us to be forgivers. Because when you become a forgiver, mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about the spirit of self-righteousness. You receive the spirit of humility. Yeah. Hum forgiveness is the spirit of humility. I'm not, I, listen, I don't have time to see what nobody else is doing. Oh. 
I'm thanking God for saving my own hide. Yeah. I don't have time to. I have time to watch you and count your sins. I'm not interested in what you're doing. I don't ask people what they do. Amen. We, we, I don't know what we got this thing about what people do. I'm not. I don't care what you do. What, I'm not interested in what you do. I'm not asking you what you do. I'm telling you about Jesus. When you receive Jesus, then he'll take care of all the doing. We, we don't, we don't pray, preach a do religion. Because let me tell you, there's a danger in that. The danger in preaching a self-righteous doing religion, you can tell people, don't, don't, you know, well, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And I know what that's like because I've been there. Because what you'll end up doing, and people will say, well, and then they'll stop doing this. Okay, I won't do it. Mm. And then they'll think, because I, I don't do it, I'm saved. Mm. No. Well, you know, you, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't spin on the left side of the street. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. Don't, tell, don't do that. Jesus never told us to go preach that to anybody. He said, go preach the gospel. Yeah. What is that? Jesus died for your sins yeah. and paid for them. You don't have to die and pay for them. Yeah. That's good news. That's gospel. Gospel and good news is the same. But he never told us to go stop people from doing this, that, and the other. Amen. And I said, I, I don't know how, well, I know the devil did it. The devil come and talk to preachers how to preach, told them to tell them people don't do this, and because you do this, you're going to hell. Mm. No, we didn't, I, never, I never seen no gospel like that. No, you tell people about Jesus. Mm. You tell them that Jesus died for your sins. And you need to receive him. No, not stop doing this. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. You, don't, you can't spit on the left side of the street. You can't live over here. You can't do this. You can't go here. You can't do, and you certainly can't do that. And what we do, we create a religion in the minds of people. And then they think, well, you know what I mean? Pastor said don't do this, so I don't do this, so I'm okay. Say so don't slap your wife before 6 o'clock. You know what so, so you so. So now you see, he said, I'll wait till after six. You see what I mean? No, you can't, no, it ain't, it's not my point is that there is not a bunch of do's and don'ts. The kingdom is, the gospel is not do's and don'ts. And here's what I tell you, people, and people want to know stuff. People ask questions like, well, is it a sin to do this? I don't know. <laughs> people ask you that. <laughs> But we shouldn't teach, we shouldn't preach to people like that. Here's what I tell people. I say, here's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Receive Jesus. Now, whatever you and Jesus do is fine with me. I, I have no problem with it. But I'm, don't, don't ask me, is this a sin to do this, a sin to do this, or, or should I do this, or should I? I don't know. Hey. I, I don't know. Hey. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to give you Jesus. And whatever Jesus allows you to do, then that's fine. Because I'm telling you, you don't realize how religious we are. And you don't realize how self-righteous we are in telling people you shouldn't do this and you can't do this. Because what we do is we develop that kind of thinking. And then when we see people doing things that we think they shouldn't do, then we develop a prejudice against them. And now you're in unforgiveness. I'm telling you, it's a devil trick. Mm -hmm. It's a devil trick. It's a devil trick. Hear me good. Mm -hmm. When you get in a do it, don't, self-righteous religion, and then when you see people yeah. doing what you've been taught and trained, yeah. that it's a sin to do this, then when you see them doing it, you're going to develop a prejudice against them without trying. Uh -huh. And now you're in unforgiveness. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, better watch it. Let's look at the, let's look at the father. The father, the father is not prejudiced against either. The father, loves them both. Now, when the father responds to the son, it 
in the 31st verse. Mm -hmm. He doesn't condemn either of them. Isn't this wonderful? Wow. See, if you ain't careful, you'll send the prodigal. You'll send the boy, boy to stay at home. You'll send him to hell. Right. Watch this. Watch this. See, this is important. This thing is tight. When the, when the, when the, finally the, the boy, quit, quit, boy he, he, he was blowing off his steam. And, in, and, and then when the, in the 30th verse, it got really rank because now he's, he's blaming his daddy. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as this your son, he ain't his brother no more, watch this. Mm -hmm. see, see what I mean? The, 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 old, the older son's still talking in the 30th verse. But as soon as this your son, this, no, this son of yours, this son of, why don't he say my brother? No, 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 no. Mm. He ain't that kind. He now is, tried, he now is mad at his father. He's doing the same thing that the God Adam did. Uh, that woman you gave me. Now he's charging God. See, it's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit operating here in this older son that was operating in Adam. When God called Adam on the carpet, that woman you gave me. And that is, now, this, now this son over son here does the same thing. This son of yours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But look at the father. Look at the father. Look at the father. And he said to him, son. He still calls him son. Yeah. Yeah. He says, son, mm. you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the older son. Yeah. Isn't it, do, you see, do you see the love of forgiveness versus selfishness and unforgiveness? Mm. And you, you can almost read this and you'll be saying, mm, yeah, yeah, get him, get him, get him. No, 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 no. No, no. The Father. This is God. This is a picture of God. But he, but this oldest son of yours just been just going, just going up. He said, don't. The same grace is on him that's on the young one. Amen. See, people, this is, ve this is very deep. This is some heavy stuff here. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen to the father. Listen to the father. He says, son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother. See, see, notice, he didn't call him. Mm -hmm. See, notice what he called him? He didn't follow the same spirit that his son, that his son came oh. in with. He said, he called him his brother. He said, it was, it was, it was right for us to do merry and make brother for your brother. For your brother was dead and is alive again. Yeah. He was lost and now he's yeah. found. I want, to show, I want to show you the gentleness of a forgiving heart. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not swayed either way. I don't really say, if you're ranking, I don't, it doesn't, I'm not moved. I, won't, I, re, I refuse to be moved either way. Yeah. The father wasn't moved either way. Yeah. I mean, you were coming out with, you know, you coming out with your own justice. Yeah, 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 give him some business. Give him the business. Give that old boy the business. The father does it. He says, it was right to do that. Right. He says, you're always with me. He complained about a goat. Come on. He got goat mentality. You ain't give me a goat. A goat! Come on. <laughs> All that I have is yours, son. And you're talking about a goat. <laughs> So all that I have is yours. You're always with me. Yeah. And now your brother's back. We're back. We're family again. Don't you like this? Aren't you happy about that? See, I'm telling you what love and forgiveness is. Love and forgiveness will quiet any storm. Yeah. I've seen friction. I've seen turmoil. I've seen... I've seen Confusion. But the love of God will calm the storm. Yes. And it'll bring all of all things to a place of peace. Yes. 
The forgiveness that God has, has given unto us is summed up in Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another, yeah. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. This is not something that you're going to go and accomplish on your own. Mm -hmm. It will be accomplished in Christ. And only in Christ. Yes. If you can go do this within yourself, then what you are saying is, I don't need Jesus. Oh. Can, you, can you get that? Because mm -hmm. that's what this is about. Yeah. No, I don't grab and say, well, I'm going to go do this on my own. No, no, no. I can only be kind to one another. I can only be tenderhearted. I can only forgive if I'm in Christ. See, that's the message that the older son didn't have. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize that he could love his brother even though he had done what he had done. Yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't. But the counsel of the father brought closure mm -hmm. to the turmoil that the older son had in the house out of him. And the father ended up getting both mm -hmm. his sons back. That's what love will do. Are you ready to walk in love and forgiveness? Let's do it. Go ahead. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. This is, this is where we are. And this is where God's called us to. He has called us to walk in this love and to walk in forgiveness. Because that's what he has called us, called us to do. Father, we thank you this day for your grace. Thank you for your son Jesus who came and gave his life so that we could be kind to one another, so that we can be tenderhearted, so that we can forgive as you have forgiven and loved us. I thank you today, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Be blessed. Go in peace and be blessed of the Lord.